last year on the Chicks tour, I was using a, a Bad Cat Panther, uh, which is a 6V6 amp, I think, which is really great. It sounded fantastic sounding amp. But our cabinets, we were using 212 cabinets, were underneath the stage in an ISO, ISO box, right? So, and it's kind of necessary with them because there's so many acoustic instruments on stage and you don't want to start putting those sound hole rubber things in and all that, you know. So, uh, and the band is big. And so, yeah, it's weird with, with the in-ears in some ways because the air around the, that you're around the note and the things that you're feeling, uh, it sometimes it makes you feel like you're like playing in a like you in a closet or something. Uh, because I don't really like to use a lot of delay on my guitar sound just just to make it sound like it's in an environment. If I'm going to use a delay, I'd rather use it as an effect. If that makes any sense, more like if David Gilmore would use would use it, you know, something in a more musical way rather than saying I. I'm going to replicate trying to be in a room. Um, so when you're really playing run and dry like that and you got those ears in uh, and your amp's not, you're not feeling anything uh, because your amp's tucked away somewhere, it gets a little funny. But, um, and it gets a little bit weird to play dynamically as far as like, you know, you hear that. <laughs> That's rolling my volume knob down like a notch and a half, you know, and sometimes it kind of gets a little suspect for me personally with the ears. Uh, but for those of us that have played through loud guitar amps for years and years and have some hearing loss and some ringing in your ears and stuff like that, it really helps out because there's no cymbals blasting in your ears all night. So when you're done, you pull those things out, and there's used to be the first thing you hear when you walked off stage and now it doesn't happen and so so pluses and minuses you know pluses and minuses I think I think absolutely absolutely you know it's a new day and time you know just about everybody's using those things now and uh and uh it's it's you adapt you know you just roll with it man figure out ways to you know you're there to make the artist happy and to do the best job you can do given the circumstances that you're given and if you're okay with that uh then you roll with it if you're not okay with it then you shouldn't be there you should go and do something else and give everybody a break, including yourself, right? So I, I very rarely show up for a gig. And you now with Joe Perry's I did because I, I kind of knew what my role was going to be because it was a small band, three-piece. So I, before we ever went, I kind of knew I'm probably going to need to play this part and this part and this part and this part, and I'm going to need these pedals for it. But with the Chicks, it was very wide open palette. And, uh, and with Peter, I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to need. So I... Um, so I built it while we were rehearsing, really. And when I say built, I mean I just put the stuff on it that I needed. Uh, it's really kind of kind of sparse. I got a tuner, and I got uh, an amp switcher because I'm also using a, 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 a 66 Fender Showman head that I use just for two songs for clean sound. And uh, so I got to have an amp switcher, and then I have a clean boost that I use just for one song. And I have a line six delay that I use for two songs. And I have uh, uh, is that a volume pedal that I use for one song, compressor that I use for one song. And these are all really the same song. And then I have an overdrive pedal that I use, you know, if we get into some taking it out, out a little bit and I want to step on it. But uh, for the most part, there's two songs in the set. If we didn't play them, I wouldn't really need anything, and I wouldn't use it if I didn't have to, you know what I mean? So... Uh, you know, you could tailor it to, there was no reason for me to go, oh, no, Leslie Box, too. The H, Hughes and Kettner, Leslie, I, you have to use that. But it would be no reason for me to go rolling up in there with, you know, with all, with a big bunch of real estate if it's not going to use any of it because it's going to eat your ton up. And I do run those in some loops. I've got a little uh, radial loop box, and I just run the, my uh, delay, a phase 90, sorry. But but we the song, we were, we're not doing that song anymore, so it's out of there. Uh, the delay effects go into one loop and then uh, the boost effects go into the other one and I just turn the loop on and off and so hopefully it's kind of getting straight to the amp without it, without the stuff. I like this guitar a whole lot because the neck shape I really, really dig on it and, uh, uh, and I also like the way it sounds a whole lot. It's not quite as, as you know, in your face as Les Paul is, you know, and, and it's not as twangy as this guitar or a Telecaster or something would be uh, and it's light which makes a big difference. Um, but I, I really think that it sounds great. It's, uh, I use it in studio a lot. Um, 
I really love the open chord sound, you know, sound that it has, and I, I and I really like uh, playing a rhythm guitar on it. I mean, playing lead guitar on it's really fun too. But but it's very clear once again, you know. Now last year on the Chicks tour, along with the in ear monitors, we also were using wireless guitar uh, uh, packs. So with the in ears, just ha and we're using wireless in ears. So not to get too technical on you, but that's two more stages of compression that you would have than if you were just plugging straight into your amp with a cord. So you're getting a little bit of compression out of the ear wireless pack and a little bit of compression out of the, uh, out of the guitar wireless pack. Plus, the guitar wireless adds a bit of top end. Not unpleasant at all. It added a little bit of top end. But I found on that tour that I was using this guitar just about all night, even though David Grissom, the other guitar player, was using a humbucker double cutaway guitar also because that top that was getting added and the compression that it was getting added was really making this more twangy than anything else. And if I went to something that was a little bit less, uh, uh, a little a guitar that was more twangy, it was almost too much. So uh, that's kind of why I leaned on that guitar. And there was things, you know, that I would be playing on certain songs, you know, just that you wouldn't just don't play on an SG, you know what I mean? But it, the, the, the sound lent it to that. Uh, and, uh, and you can hear there was another song that we did uh, of the girls that, called Ready to Run that they had years ago that we kind of revamped, and I actually uh, was lucky enough to have sort of suggested this guitar riff that we take into it that's kind of a little bit of a Rolling Stones thing, but you can hear that it's still very clear even in the middle of the neck right here. It doesn't bog down and, and, and get too too weird. So, But with this extra top that we were getting, it really kind of almost sounded kind of twangy, but it, it was, uh, let me see if I remember. <laughs> You know, so you can hear that, that it's still very articulate, you know. Uh, and once again, to beat the, the horse into the ground. With, that, with the wireless, the two wirelesses, it just adds that much more, you know. So um, that was one unusual thing about the SG. I mean, you know, a lot of, I really like to use it to, you know, for, for that kind of stuff, you know, or, or even woolly. If you really want to... You know, it'll rock out. 